Well, hey, everybody. Welcome into Second Students Online. My name is Tyler. I'm the student pastor here, and we are just so thankful that you guys have chosen to join in with us tonight for our online service. Whether you're watching this live as soon as it starts or you're tuning in later tonight or even tomorrow or later on in the week, we just want to say welcome and that we're thankful to be able to host you tonight and dig into the Word together. So we ask that you would grab your Bibles. Invite a friend, spread the news about this, because this is a cool new way of doing ministry. It's, it's kind of weird being in, a, in an empty room with just me and a camera. I miss you guys. We, we miss the noise. We miss the glass bottles falling on the floor. We miss the games. But in all that, we're so thankful we can still gather together via YouTube. So tonight, it's going to be a great night. We're going to finish up our current series called Take Heart. We're talking about, in week three, that God fights for you. So we're excited. So go ahead and grab your Bibles, open them up. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 14, and we're excited to dig in together. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to go on. So let's pray. Father God, we love you. Jesus, we thank you that we have a way to come tonight to worship together. God, though it's through video, though it's through YouTube, and we're not together in person, God, the church goes on. Ministry continues. The kingdom can still be grown through social media. And God, we're seeing that. And tonight I pray for every person that's tuned in. God, for those that will tune in, that you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds to hear and receive that from your word tonight, what you have for us. So Father, we just pray that this would be glorifying and edifying to you. And God, that you would continue to be with us through this time. God, bless us. Bless our students. Bless our guests. Let us have a great night in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hey students, welcome in to tonight YouTube premiere, 6 o'clock. If you're watching this live, we want to say welcome. If you're watching this tonight or later on this week, we still want to say welcome. We're glad that you guys have joined us wherever you are, whatever time it is, to dig into the Word tonight. And we just wanted to say welcome, that it's really weird that I'm speaking to an empty room right now because you should be here but instead, you're at home, and we're thankful that we're safe, but also we miss you guys, and we're ready for it to get back to normal. But tonight is no different. We're still going to dig into the Word. We're still going to have some fun, and we're still going to hear what God has for us. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and grab them. We're going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter 14. But before we read, I, I kind of have a little story now. If you're a student of ours regularly, you know that I love to tell stories. If you're not, then my students make fun of me for telling a story because I do every week. We call it story time with Tyler, I think is what it is. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a story from a kid's book. I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, uh, this story comes from way back in my childhood, about 23 years ago. I'm getting old, y'all. I'm like a dinosaur. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, story goes, <laughs> wow, story goes that me and my cousin were shooting pool in my grandmother's living room. Now, my cousin and I grew up, we were only children in our families. We were first cousins, so pretty much we were like brothers. And we're sitting there, and we're shooting pool, and he's teaching me how to shoot. And he says, hey, it goes like this. And he goes, bah. But when he hits it, he knocks in my ball. So I'm like three years old, he's seven. I didn't compute what happened really. All I knew was that he shot and made it, and I was supposed to shoot and make it, so I got mad. So we start fighting like we did almost every single day, and all of a sudden I'm so mad that I begin chasing him around the house with the pull stick. I'm like a little three-year-old, little like short, chunky kid. He's like seven years old. He's already tall. He's like 6'4 now. He's huge. He's always been bigger than me. But for some reason, I just got brave, and I was like, Rah! and just chased him through the house. Chaos abounding. We got in trouble. It was a good time. But growing up for us, that's what it looked like. We were essentially brothers. We were the only children on our side of the family. We were only kids. So we were loners and we had each other. We would spend summers together and we would fight like brothers. I, mean, I remember there was one time we were playing outside in the yard and I said something to him. His name's Robin. And Robin, if you're watching, I love you. I'm still bitter about this, but I love you. Uh, we're playing wiffle ball or something and all of a sudden we got mad at each other. I 
I turned around to go inside, and I just got hit in the back. He threw a full can of Coke at me and hit me in the back. Like, bro, looking back on that, what were you doing? Like, why? But anyway, I say that story because it's funny, but also to ask you a question, have you ever gotten in a fight before? Have you ever physically, verbally, uh, mentally been in an altercation? Have you hit somebody? Have you pushed somebody? Have you said something to somebody? Most of the stories would say yes. Most of the people on the video would probably say yes. In some way, you've gotten in an argument with your mom or your dad or your brother, sister, your cat or your dog or your pet iguana. I don't know. Students are weird. But we've all gotten in fights, and I've learned over the years that because me and my cousin fought so much like brothers that it was okay if we fought with each other and were mean to each other, but heaven forbid if somebody else was mean to us. Heaven forbid if somebody did something to us or said something about us because both of us still to this very day are ready to roll because we're family and we care about each other and we fight for each other. And tonight, Take Heart Week 3, we're talking about our last segment, session, whatever you want to call it, that God fights for us, that God fights for you. And we go back to the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. If you got your Bibles, go Genesis, Exodus. We're right there in the middle of this book. And kind of what's going on, God's people have been enslaved in Egypt. They were slaves to Pharaoh. And God is wanting to set them free. There's a man named Moses who came on the scene. God uses Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And this is the story of how that goes But before we start reading, I want to set us up to get us to where we're going. And the main truth tonight that I want you to get is that trials are for God's glory to overshadow your own. That's the truth that we're chasing after, that God's glory overshadows your own. In verse 4, chapter 14, get your Bibles and let's read. This is God speaking, and God says, Once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after you. Great. Thanks, God. An Egyptian... Pharaoh is going to chase me. Awesome. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped where they were told. So God has spoken to Moses and said, okay, I'm going to lead you guys out. Here's what's going to happen. You are going to go camp where I tell you to camp. I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's going to chase after you, try to kill you, and then I'm going to take care of it. Okay. Time out, blow the whistle. What? Like, I think about this, and I see God's character, and I see his mind, but so many times I think God puts us in these circumstances to show us something. A trial in your life has a purpose. We talked in week one, we talked about turbulence being inevitable. John 16, that Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble. That it's evident that turbulence is inevitable. Like, it's going to happen. But Jesus gives us a promise and says, but take heart because I've overcome the world. We celebrated that on Easter last Sunday, him resurrecting, overcoming the grave, overcoming sin, death, and hell. Boom, here we sit, but we go way back in time and read this story And it poises the question to me, or poses, not poises, poses. I can't talk, y'all. What? It's weird. It's an empty room. Anyway, focus. This question comes to my mind is that why does God often put us in circumstances that we can't get out of on our own? Think about that. Right now in your life, maybe you're going through a circumstance like that. Maybe stuff in your world is kind of chaotic. Maybe things in your home life are uneven. Maybe there's some issues going on in your head mentally and you're struggling with some anxiety or fear and you ask yourself, God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Well, I can tell you that one, it's for a good reason, but two, God wants to show you something. And we're going to read about this in verses 5 through 14 tonight. We're going to go ahead and read and it says that When word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their mind. So here comes what God said was about to happen is about to happen. What have we done letting all those Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariot, called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots along with the rest of the chariots of all of Egypt, even with its commanders. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Here we go. 
the king of Egypt. So he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fists raised in defiance. So right there, they said, we will not bow to Pharaoh. We will not bow to him. We are followers of God. We believe in God. Moses was leading us to the promise. We're going to defy against that. That's what happened there. So verse 9 the Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses and his chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore. Here we go. The story goes like this. God sends his people to camp, sends Pharaoh after them to kill them, but instead of that happening, God provides a way out. As God does in his own fashion... He provides a way out to show us something. And truth one tonight that I want you to get is that trials are for his glory to overshadow your own. That the things we go through in our life that we think we can handle on our own, God wants to put us in a place sometimes where there's no escape, that we have no choice but to rely on him. The Israelites in this moment, were, were they're at some context, it says they were on the shore. They were literally on the break of waves with an ocean behind them. They had nowhere to go, trapped. They could see land on the other side, but they couldn't get to it because they were trapped. And all of a sudden, in verse 10, the story gets even wilder. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord. So they look up, and all they see is hundreds of men and horses, which horses are pretty, but those are kind of fierce-looking things, I think. And they're coming towards them, bows and javelins and just fierce looks like, give me your game face. And they're coming, and they freak out. I would too. Because, I mean, if I see 600 grown men on 600 horses, I'm going to, okay, what's going on here? There's an ocean, there's them, I can't move, what am I going to do? Freak mode, and they panic. And that word right there I want us to get is that they panicked. We talked last week about why worry. Why do we worry? And that worry sometimes takes us over, and panic does too. And in these moments of panic, we lose sight of what God is doing. We lose sight of what God is wanting to do and what he's trying to show us because in the panic mode, we're freaking out. We can't think clearly. We can't look clearly. We can't act clearly. And all of our central inner windings are flipping out. And God's still speaking. And God is still showing them something. But the truth is that trials are for his glory to overshadow your own because in the trial that you're going through, as dark at night or as dark of the day or as deep in the anxiety or as the family problem you've got and you feel like your back's against a wall and you have nowhere to go, God is wanting to use that to grow you and also to show you who he is. Because I think at times as believers it takes us getting in moments that we know we're powerless to begin to rely on the power that God gives us through him. And trials show us two things, I believe, just like it did for the Israelites. That one, it shows us what we're incapable of doing on our own. But two, it shows us what he is capable of doing on his own. The rest of verse 10 says, they cried out to the Lord, verse 11, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Good question. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. It's true. They thought that slavery would have been better than what was about to happen to them in that moment. They saw imminent death. They didn't see the promise. They just saw the moment. Like us. When we get in these moments of trials and troubles and tribulations and panic and anxiety and fear and worry, we can't see what God is really doing because we're so focused on the circumstance that we're not focusing on the promise, that we're not focusing on the reality of what God is doing and wanting to do in and through us. And I love, love, love what the end of this section says, verse 13. But Moses, being the follower of God he was, faithful to what God was leading him to do for the people, said this. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. 
The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again, and the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. I love that word calm because I think about so many stories in the Bible that Jesus shows up in calms. God shows up in calms. It's like you think about the disciples on the boat in the New Testament where they're in the ocean and waves are hitting and Jesus is asleep and he stands up. He's like, boom, calm. What are you freaking out about? I'm in control. And the disciples bow down and worship him and they're scared because they see his power. And I think for us, this gets us in the perspective and the mindset of what God is capable of doing because in the story, they are backs against an ocean with an army of 600 fierce men ready to capture them and take them back to slavery and even kill them. And they have no way out. They can't fight out of a paper bag. They have no weapons. They weren't prepared for this. And it's in that moment that God does what God always does. In one minute to sum up the story, here's what happens. Ready? Go. They're sitting there. They're at the ocean. They see Pharaoh. He cries out. Moses says, God, what are we going to do? All of a sudden, God says, Moses, grab a staff. I'll grab a zip tie. He says, grab a staff. Hold it up. Smack the ground. So, boom, there it goes, okay? This is wild. God used a piece of wood to split an entire ocean and made a dry path. Like, I could imagine, like, They're looking at this and like dolphins are like jumping across and like sharks are swimming beside them. And it's like, God said, go, walk, get out of here, let's go. So Moses is like, all right, I ain't going to argue with this, let's go. So they walk. They're walking through this. They're going through it. I can imagine like every kid's like, ooh, it's a starfish. Oh my gosh, look at the fish. I'd be like, boom, beeline, let's get out of this water. And then here's what happens. God hardens Pharaoh's heart even more. The Pharaoh chases after them. Once they get to the other side, guess what happens? God washes everything, closes the water up, and all of Pharaoh's men are swallowed. Situation over, promise kept, glory shown. Because in the moments of trouble, God provides a way out for us, and he shows us the way out because he shows us who he is and what he wants to do in us. The second truth tonight is that stillness results in us seeing God in who his true character is. Stillness, the moment that it says, the Lord himself will fight for you, just stay calm. Verse 13, back up one verse. It says, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. Sometimes God calls us in the middle of our chaos to stop. Sometimes God calls us in the middle of our circumstances to pause, to hit the T button and say, okay, I'm going to sit here for 30 seconds and just be still. And maybe some of you have never done that. Right now, you're in one of the biggest trials of your life. Your family's falling apart. The world around us is in panic mode. School's hard. Finances are tight. Some of you are worrying about where you're going to get your next meal. Some of you can't afford to even pay your rent. Your parents are fighting. Your dad walked out, your mom walked out. Those moments of trouble that you're in right now, I'll tell you this, that God is working and weaving in a way that only he can. And he's asking us as people who believe in who he is and who he says he is to just pause and let him fight for us. Because it's in the moments of anxiety that we so often put our fists up and we say we're ready to fight, we're ready to go. But the moment something happens, we crumble and we step back and we're pinned up against that wall like the Israelites were against the ocean and we're crying out, God, I need you. God, help me. And in those moments, God always comes through. And tonight, I want you to understand wherever you are, stop fighting your own battle. Stop fighting the very thing that's come against you for days and months and years and even maybe your whole life that you were such a victim to. Maybe if you stop fighting it on your own for a moment and let God work through you like he says he wants to, then things will change. But he calls for us to be still. Psalm 4610, the psalmist is talking to God and conversing and praying and God speaks to him and says, be still and know that I'm God two things you learn from that verse. One, be still. It's an action. God is calling us to an action of stillness, of calm, of serenity, of saying, okay, statue moment. I'm going to stand here and be still. And two, he says to know. 
He gives an action and he gives a result. The action is to stop and be still and the result is that you will find out who I am. And truth too is that stillness results in, results in us seeing who God really is. And tonight I tell you this, in the middle of the circumstance you're going through, in the middle of whatever the darkest night is for you right now, God is speaking directly to your soul saying, be still. Stop. Your answers aren't going to work. Your methods are never going to happen and come through. Your strength is completely, completely unable to conquer the situation. Let me work in you and you just be still and let me fight for you. Because I think as believers so often we try to fight for ourselves because we want to be in control of things and we want to manipulate the situation. We talked about this last week with worry, that worry is a desire of control. It stems from that. And I think in panic mode, whenever the Israelites were standing there looking at this army coming towards them, their first thought was, I've got to defend myself. They didn't even think about what God was going to do. They were mad at him saying, why did you lead us here? Moses, you're an idiot. We're stuck. We're trapped. There's no way out. But look at what God does. He provided a way out. He fought a battle for them and won. And tonight, he can do the same thing for you. No matter where you're at, what's going on in your life, I want to get this into your heart. Is that God used the person of Pharaoh to represent a trial in the lives of the Israelites to reveal to them his glory through their trial and show them what he was capable of doing. Tonight, I ask you this question, what's your Pharaoh? What's the thing that's been coming against you that you can't get past? Maybe it's a sin that you're struggling with letting go. Maybe it's a circumstance in your life that's been debilitating you for weeks on end, and days and months and years. Maybe it's a circumstance that just happened, and you're sitting there thinking, my back's against the wall, I'm trapped. Well, sometimes God wants to trap us to steal us to get us to align our perspective with what he wants us to see, and that's his glory over our own. So tonight, wherever you are, whatever your Pharaoh is, whatever that insurmountable army looks like that's in front of you and that ocean that's behind you, know that God can and will make a way. We just have to be still and let him. Tonight, trust that promise that God fights for you. Verse 14, the end of it, says, the Lord will fight for you. Just stay calm and trust him. The word says, for the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. And that's how we fight our battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. What we're doing tonight. This is how I fight my battles. Just when you think you're lost. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles.
is how we fight. This is how we fight our bed. 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 Well, what an incredible song to know and to sing about the fact that when we're surrounded, we're surrounded by him himself. And tonight we are praying that those words would penetrate into your soul, that it may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by you, and that God is working and weaving and moving in and through you and your life and in your circumstance. And we want you to be encouraged by that. Tonight, uh, if there's any decision you've made or that you need to reach out and talk to us, there'll be some links below us in just a few moments that'll come up after we finish. But we just wanted to say thank you again for joining us. Uh, keep an eye out for some announcements that'll be after this video, and we will see you guys next week, same time same place to do this all again. We love you. We miss you. And we'll see you all soon. Have a great week.